Good morning, Merry Christmas, and a big thanks to Greg and Lorraine Clark for letting us pop up here on Christmas Day with the best Christmas tree on the East Coast and this amazing fire again behind me. Christmas Day reminds us that peace, love, joy, and hope all have the last word. And so as we consider the spiritual path of Jesus on this day, my hope is that something on his path would encourage you so that you could leave with greater hope. Welcome to Christmas Day at the Well. Well, Merry Christmas. We invite you to sing with us wherever you are, with friends or with family or by yourself on the couch. Uh, we invite you to sing. We're going to sing Joy to the World. Oh, uh -huh. 
hearts and with hearts that have made room for you, who have stopped working and stopped worrying and we're taking this moment to sit here with you, to honor you and to adore you and to make sure that we continue to make room in our hearts for what you have to offer us. The hope of salvation peace and joy. So we thank you for this beautiful morning and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now for our scripture passage today, we have Greg Clark who is going to read for us. Merry Christmas. Our scripture passage for Christmas Day comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. 
When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Here ends the reading of God's Word. Everything about Christmas centers on this idea of the higher becoming lower. And that's a picture of humility. And we see a lot of layers of humility on Christmas Day. Uh, for example, um, ontologically, uh, the infinite God taking on a mortal body. Uh, morally, uh, a holy, perfect God taking on the sins of the world. Um, spiritually, a God who is in perfect relationship, uh, experiences what it is to be disconnected. Religiously, a God who experiences perfect worship walks among those who lack worship. And then even just in the, the, the category of power itself, an all-powerful God becoming powerless like a baby uh, to the point of needing to actually be swaddled and be cared for and to be rocked. And so this act of humility of, of God becoming man, this higher becoming lower, shows us something about ourselves and shows us something about the God of the Bible. So something about ourselves. Um, the passage that was read today is often read on Christmas Eve, but historically it's also read on Christmas Day because again, Christmas Day celebrates the gift of the birth of Jesus. And when you heard the passage, you'll notice that Jesus was already born and that birth was an, that was an announcement of his birth. And so when we think about Christmas and we think about this gift of the birth of Jesus, uh, we, we see this practice of gift giving uh, at, at Christmas. And gift giving is interesting because in order to receive a gift, there is some level of pride that you have to swallow. So on one hand, if a friend gives you a gift, um, a, a scarf, a sweater, um, so, you know, a picture, um, the pride really isn't experienced, but just this idea that, you know, I need friendship in order to survive. There's a level of, of humility there. Um, if we take it on kind of a, a funny level, if you get a, a, a present today and you open it up and it's the book, Seven Habits for Highly Effective People, you know, in order to receive that book well from a loved one, you kind of have to chuckle at yourself. Oh, gee, I guess I have a few things to work on. Um, you know, on a, maybe on a more serious note, um, some of us know what it is to be in deep financial straits. Uh, maybe we lost our job at just the wrong time and we can't pay our rent. And so if you were given a rent check from a family member or a loved one, um, there's, a, there's a degree of pride that needs to be swallowed because um, your need is great. You even maybe wrestle with yourself, you know, can, can I really accept this gift? Am I, am I too good to accept this gift? And what we see at Christmas with God becoming man is a really a strong picture. Uh, we can look at it this way. If an all-powerful, all-loving, um, all-knowing God had to become man, uh, was needed, in order to, to save us, that, that must mean we're in pretty bad shape. Why? Because the greatness of this gift shows us the, the depth of our, of our smallness. And I wonder if you see that on, on Christmas Day today. Uh, do you see your great need? That's what Christmas Day would have you consider. So, uh, the higher becoming lesser shows us something about ourselves. Our need is deep, but it also shows us something about God. And this is the principle of the power of the higher. C.S. Lewis gives us a thought today. He says, the power of the higher, just insofar as it is truly higher, can come down to include the lesser. Everywhere the great enters the little, its power to do so is almost its test of its greatness. Thus, solid bodies exemplify truths of plain geometry, but plain geometry figures no truths of solid. Thus, we can become kittenish with our kittens, but our kitten will never discuss philosophy with you. Thus, when I am at peace and joy, I enter into the hurt of someone who is angry and despondent. But when I'm angry and despondent, I cannot enter into the joy and into the peace of someone else. Why? Because joy and peace are higher and they're greater. Okay, what's, what's Lewis saying? 
He's saying to the degree that something or someone can enter into the lesser, to that degree it is higher, it is fuller, it is greater. And that's what we see on Christmas Day. You know, in God becoming man, his greatness touches our hearts. And it's through that greatness of his love that our hearts become open. They become soft. Our greed turns to generosity and our darkness turns to light. And when something really great comes down and becomes lesser, um, it can sympathize. Um, it, can, it can humble itself. You know, it says you're, you're strong enough to be weak. You know, you're, you're secure enough to be vulnerable. And, and that is the full picture of Christmas. Christmas is the God of the Bible, full of greatness, comes down so that we who are empty in him can become great. Christmas is a God filled with light and filled with glory can come down so that we who are filled and walking in darkness can be filled with light and be filled with his glory. And do you know what that sounds like? That, that sounds like Easter, where God becoming man, heaven touching earth, doesn't stop there. But the higher to the lesser goes all the way to the grave itself. So that we, when we go to the grave, we will be filled with life and light itself and be resurrected with him. And that's why all the best Christmas songs have a little bit of Easter in them. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found, Christmas and Easter. And so with that, I'd like to invite you to a time of personal guided reflection. This is something that we do um, each Sunday at the well, and it gives us a moment to hold space for ourselves and for anything that the God of the Bible might be pressing into us. So um, uh, at, at your home, wherever you're at, in your bedroom, your living room, I just invite you to close your eyes. And we close our eyes because in doing so, we cut out the outside world and our imagination in our minds and in our hearts can take on a different texture. And so as we think about maybe the passage of scripture that was read, or this idea of the power of the higher. Um, or maybe it's something else that, you, that this sermon is provoking in you, that encourages you, uh, that causes reflection. I just want you to open your heart to the God of the Bible through that. Uh, maybe nothing in particular comes to mind. I would recommend uh, trying this great ancient prayer uh, that we see in scripture, which says, search me, and know me, O God. That's a very humble moment. It says, I don't have the ability to know myself. And go ahead and open your heart to the God of the Bible now. With your eyes remaining closed, let's shift our posture to one of recentering. This reminds us that we're always centering around something, but we get the choice to decide what we're going to center around. And so I, as I read these pieces of scripture, grab a word or a phrase or an entire idea that encourages you and open your heart to the God of the Bible through that. Scripture says to you, let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant 
and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. For God says, at just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. And so go ahead and grab onto a word or a phrase or an entire idea and open up your heart to the God of the Bible through that now. Oh God, we thank you for this reminder on Christmas Day of your humility, that, you, that your greatness didn't cause you to stand away from us, but it actually caused you to enter into our story and into our lives. And we thank you that it's in you that our lives are completely transformed to life, to light, to glory. And with this transformation, I pray that you would uh, move us to people of great hope as we finish up the rest of this calendar year and we start the new year in 2022, may your hope, may your glory, because you came down on Christmas, radiate through all of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king peace on earth and mercy mild god and sin
Well, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, just a quick reminder that tomorrow, Sunday, December 26, we have our in-person service back at the Scandinavia House, so we hope to see you there. But now, as you go throughout the rest of Christmas Day, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in God, so that you might overflow with hope as you see the greatness of God come down to you on Christmas Day by the power of God's Spirit. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. <laughs>